For this short video, I must thank YouTube commenter Christopher Taylor, who asked me, in response to my second Kepler video, how did Kepler know that the moon had lower gravity, since Newton hadn't formulated his gravitational law yet? Well, Chris, if I may call you that, you've shined light onto a gaping chasm in my work. This really is something I should have brought up in the Kepler videos. I don't know if I've said this, but I read every comment, and when one brings to light a factual error, or, as in this case, an error of omission, I do everything I can to address it. I am neither a professional historian nor a professional scientist, and will make mistakes. If anyone feels the need to correct me, I would much prefer a scathing, disappointed comment to holding back for fear of causing offense. Anyway, Johannes Kepler. He was an odd fellow, as I hope I made clear. And because he was an odd fellow, with some very odd ideas, there has been a tendency to lump his scientific thoughts with his more esoteric musings, which means that, outside of his three laws, which are fairly unequivocal, his scientific contributions tend to get lost, overshadowed as they are by the better-known Galileo and Newton. But the idea of gravity was not lost on Kepler, and had been forming and gestating since Copernicus put the moon around a moving Earth. In fact, Kepler's understanding of gravity was, from our perspective, surprisingly advanced. In his first published work, The Mysterium Cosmographicum, written at a very excitable 21, Kepler, prefiguring his own third law, wrote, Either the souls of the planets are less active the farther removed a planet is from the sun, or there exists only one motive soul in the center of the orbits, that is, the sun, which drives the planet more vigorously the closer the planet is. In later works, he was careful to say force rather than soul. Unlike Galileo, he was more open to the idea of immaterial occult forces and saw gravity as an immaterial force emanating from the sun. Unlike Aristotle, he believed that the planets were composed of physical substance and so were affected by the same forces as the Earth. In his letter to Fabricius, written in 1605, Kepler wrote that, quote, Gravity is a magnetic force that brings together similar objects, which is of the same quantity in a large or small body, and divided as per the mass of the bodies, and assumes the same extent as the body. This is about as fair a description of Newtonian gravity as could be expected. He understood that gravity was an invisible force, like the then recently discovered magnetism. He understood that it was equal for small as well as large bodies and he understood that its strength depended on the mass of the body. This last discovery, that gravity was proportional to mass, was original to Kepler. No one else had thought of it before. He went on, quote, If a stone were placed behind the earth, of some noteworthy proportion of size, uh, that is, relative to the earth, and the opportunity were given for both to be free from any other motion, then I assert that not only would it occur that the stone would move toward the earth, but that the earth would move toward the stone. Here he describes perfectly that gravity is mutually attractive, and even clarifies that, quote, two attracting bodies would divide the space between them in inverse ratio to their weights, and that, quote, two bodies would come together at some intermediate place, each approaching the other at a distance proportional to the other's mass. In his Astronomia Nova, he even presages Isaac Newton by saying that just as an apple falls toward the earth, so the earth falls toward the apple, though the distance is minute. In another of his fantastical visions, he pondered, quote, If the earth would cease to attract its sea water, it would rise up and flow toward the body of the moon. In note 202 of the Somnium, Kepler noted that Sailors say tides are highest when the sun and moon are in alignment. Thus tides seem to be affected by the same force. Unfortunately, Kepler's formulation of gravity was not complete. For, unlike Newton, he never realized that gravitational strength decreases with the square of the distance. This is odd, because Kepler knew that light behaved this way, and frequently compared gravity to light. He was also very much aware that the effect of gravity fell very rapidly with distance. He just didn't make that one connection. It would be 60 years before Newton did. <laughs>